Next up on the Cosmic News Network, first contact with Joshua Putt. Good morning, Earthlings. Good. How you doing today? Good. Good. How you doing today? Welcome morning, to First Contact Radio. Welcome to First Contact Radio. To talk about all these things I'm talking about is because in life, everything is energy. Every single thing that's out there. Yo, it's First Contact with Joshua Bowen. He's the man on the mic, just in case you didn't know it. Covering news from all around the globe, from the weather and space to UFOs. He'll talk politics and make you open your eyes. Conspiracy theories and government lies. He'll dig it all up and try to find the proof. Cause it's time to demand the truth. It's time. First Contact it's time. Radio. We it's have time arrived. To First Contact Radio. It's time. First contact with radio. We it's have arrived. First contact radio. It's time. First contact with radio. It's time to demand First contact radio. We it's have time. arrived. First contact with radio. Good morning, Earthlings. How you doing today? Hope you had a good weekend. Did you? Hope so. We're moving right along. It is the week. It's called the Holy Week uh, because we have a lot of things going on this week. This is Easter week. It's also the week leading up to Passover, which is Saturday. Um, so we have a lot of changes going on there. We have this full moon, blood moon coming up. I'm going to talk about that in a bit. So a lot of things going on. A lot of energy this weekend um, and leading into this week. Today our sun sign is the same as it was last week, Aries. Okay, so Aries is the emperor. He who sets in order. Aries is the first of the sign of the zodiac. So we ended the last sign, we began the new one. So with this new beginning, this springtime thing, we're setting things in order, setting our ideas. Aries is a fire sign. It's all about taking the ideas, because fire is ideas. We're taking these ideas and putting them in order, how we're going to organize our world. We think about spring cleaning. That's the whole idea along with this as well. Our moon sign is Leo. Leo is all about strength. Here you have the feminine presence that is taming the masculine presence. Okay, that feminine aspect taming the masculine. The feminine, you know, if you notice the woman here, she looks the same as the same as the empress. So it's the same character. The high priestess is the same character as the empress, except the empress is pregnant. The empress, the pregnant earth mother, goes out and she's taming the lion. They're the same characters, just different aspects of them as we go. Leo is all about uh, creativity. It's about our ideas. It's about our passion. But the secret lesson to this card is all about how we use our energy. And we channel it through our heart space, through love. Because we all have this powerful energy that, that resides within us. It's called the Kundalini. And when we allow that energy to rise up, or when it rises up, and we allow it to go through our heart space, things we do are colored by love. And that's the best way to go about it. So today we have double fire, fire of Aries, fire of Leo. We know that fire is an element that moves, right? It flickers, it moves. So today is a day of movement, activity. So as we go into the world, we want to be aware of this. Now it's going to be a day, things are going to be moving around, a lot of ideas, a lot of fire around us, both consciously and unconsciously. So we look at some of the aspects we're dealing with. A couple have already taken place, uh, Jupiter expanding outward, the ideas of our creativity, perhaps in the form of dreams for many of us in this part of the world. Then we have uh, Pluto and uh, the Empress had a nice good positive trine again through the middle of the night, 2.47 a.m., transforming our imagination. We're just about now to go into a square, right here, a square between uh, Leo and Venus, imagination. So we're squaring those things off. We just saw an image of a woman taming the lion. Well, that could be the same woman that is the woman in the card represented by Venus or the Empress. They're at a square, which means there's a challenge going on there challenge taming that animal nature within ourselves so that's something we're going to have to learn to get a hold of and then before the hours up we do have a sign between Uranus and Leo unexpected changes that take place 
and we also go into this void of course moon phase which means that we are leaving the last aspects of Leo all the way until we enter Virgo which won't be until tomorrow afternoon so the whole rest of this day we're going to be in a void of course phase tonight Mercury is going to move into Aries Mercury is communication all right so that's what's going on there when we look at the planet watcher see how everything's progressed Again, you can see what's moving slow and what's moving fast. These right here are the same ones that are still been here. You can see the moon is one of the fast movers. The sun moves along here, not quite as fast. We have Mercury moving through here. So it's very interesting just to keep track on a daily basis. See how things are moving, the patterns that they create, the squares, the triangles, and so on. On the Jewish calendar, today is 10 Nisan, 10 Nisan, year 5775. Daily thought, not by choice. We are not Jews by choice. We are not circumcised, circumcised by choice. They do it to us before we can be asked. Neither did anyone ask us if we would like to be obligated in all of these mitzvahs. Not since Mount Sinai. Even the one who joins us does so because something propels him from inside. If we were Jews because our minds and our hearts told us so, then our Judaism would take us only as far as our minds and our hearts can know. But we are not, and so our journey is on eagle's wings and our destiny beyond the stars. 80% of the full were on a waxing moon will be at the full moon this weekend. Space weather, solar wind, 324.2 kilometers per second at the moment. Planetary K index is quiet in the one range. Look at this corona hole down here. Look how this one certainly opened up. Said so we're going to be getting some uh, wind coming from this area. It's quite a good sizable uh, hole there. M-class flare possibility is at 25% X-class at 5 geomagnetic storm activity 45% in the mid latitudes and the high latitudes it gets as high as 70% so we've got some activity going on from the Sun and uh, we have it a couple of interesting pictures people have taken recently all right, moving over to the next article here. This is the sky tonight. 30th, we've got the moon. Up to the right of the moon, we've got Jupiter. And Leo, Regulus, the sickle of Leo, off to the left. It says, watch Jupiter satellite Europa emerge out of the eclipse from Jupiter's shadow around 11.01 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. The telescope, watch for it to gradually glimmer into view. A little Jupiter's celestial eastern limb all right so there you have it that is the cosmic weather what's going on today so just prepare accordingly a lot of fire a lot of ideas out in the world making that transition when we go from leo we go to virgo virgo is an earth sign virgo is all about analyzing things so we're moving from all of this phase of leo we're going to hit the brakes as we go into a void of course for the portion of today once we get there and then a good chunk of today is going to be that void of course moon through the course of tonight and until tomorrow till tomorrow afternoon so void of course we're kind of in that in between phase we're processing all of this ideas this creativity this imagination we're processing that animal nature well at the same time we're getting ready to go into analyzing everything we've been doing the hermit is the one who holds the lantern up high, and that's the one that represents Virgo that we're moving into. So just a little bit of uh, ideas of where we're headed, where we're at, just so we can keep some focus on what it is we're trying to do. All right, there you go. That is our cosmic weather. That gets us started. Let's jump over to UFO News. It's up next. This is the UFO News.
with Joshua Poet. All right, Dirk. Thank you very much. Today, I have several good stories. First one here comes to us from Kalima. We had a sighting there last week. Here's another one. Second UFO over Kalima Volcano. This took place on the 29th yesterday. Object in question right there. There it is again. Okay, this is from the live cam. You can just check this out. There's the live cam link. So we're checking out the live cam at Kalima. Because Street Cap 1 found a UFO there a few days ago. I was left lucky enough to catch a similar UFO, UFO on the opposite side of the volcano. Street Cap 1 caught this on his left side middle of the volcano. I caught mine on the right side middle. Take a look at the live camera yourself. See if you can catch something. Okay. So check that link out, First Contact Radio, and I'll put the live link directly to the webcam on the web page as well. Here we have a disc-shaped UFO sighting on Mars. A possible UFO has been photographed by one of the Mellon Space Science cameras, which are currently operating in orbit around Mars. It is interesting to note that the object bears a strikingly resemblance to the Jupiter 2 spaceship from the popular science fiction series Lost in Space. So, here we go. As we scroll up, you're about to see it. There it is. So, the ship from Lost in Space. Are they in there? Penny? Will? Robot? Dr. Smith? Are you in there? Alright, very interesting indeed. Moving on. Alien ship to ship transfer caught in the NASA sun photos. Okay, Street Cap One of YouTube was looking at last year's Soho sun photos when he found this photo with two ships. Not that, not only that they, but they, not only that, but they seem to be tied to one another. Street Cap One thinks it's probably a ship to ship transfer. Also, it could be an energy beam. A tractor beam of sorts because it looks like they are towing the other ship someplace. Another mind blowing discovery from Street Cap 1. Okay, very interesting indeed. What is that? It's a very good, uh, good question. Good question indeed. Looks like something is being transferred. One object is carrying another object. All right, links available, so you can check it out, see what you think. Unidentified flying object over Estero, Florida, the 29th. Witness reports, I was sitting on my couch, and as I looked out my patio, and I spotted this red ball glowing up and down. I was walked out into my patio to observe, and it stopped moving, was hovering over my house. It was round and red. There it is round red ball floating above the house All right. very interesting all the things that we keep seeing these days here's a sphere of light sighting video over central coast baffles witnesses and experts well, we definitely have something in here a brief sighting in the sky left teenager Josh Elton and his family in Gorokhan in the central coast of Baffled. According to the 15-year-old Josh, we were just sitting on the lounge at around 7.30 Thursday when he and his younger brother saw that they initially thought a plane was flying very low. Josh said that the mysterious aerial object was swerving all around as Josh and his family looked out to Sam Remo. Josh thought it was going to crash. His mother thought it might have been a meteor, but no other news about something hitting the ground in the central coast. Josh managed to get his iPad used it to get a video of their encounter. He captured a 12-second video of the UFO. He said that friends and neighbors were equally stumped to the spherical luminous object when it slowed when he showed the brief video to them. UFO sightings expert Dominic McNamara took a closer look at the video. McNamara, a senior member of the UFO and Paranormal Research Society of Australia, said that the flashing lights regularly appear at slower frequency but sometimes appearing to be revolving objects. McNamara said that the UFO seemed to change course slightly towards the left camera 
as it is about to disappear. He was basing his analysis on the vector diagram and measurement. He concluded that it was impossible to identify the object and no other report about it. He is planning to examine the video further. He also revealed that they are trying to search for other accounts in the area. The last UFO sighting reported from the Central Coast happened in July 2013 when a hobby phot photographer, photographer Drew Ryan snapped images and extensive video footage of a large UFO above Empire Bay. Alright, let's move on to the next story here. This one is called a Neuroseti. Meet Neuroseti searching for infrared beams from aliens. Skies cleared for a successful first night at Neurosoti at Lick Observatory. The ghost image is Shelley Wright pausing for a moment along the long exposure with the rest of her team continued to the test a new instrument inside the dome. Astronomers at the University of California, San Diego have broken out a new tool in the search for intelligent extraterrestrial life, an instrument that can scan the skies for pulses of infrared light that may be indicative of messages from advanced civilizations and other worlds. The instrument known as NeuroSETI, which stands for Near Infrared Optical Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence, was developed by current UCSD assistant professor of physics Shelley Wright and colleagues while she was at the University of Toronto's at Dunlap Institute for Astronomy and Astrophysics. Wright explained that the infrared light would be an excellent means of interstellar communication as pulses from a powerful enough infrared laser could shine brighter than a star for a fraction of a second. Since interstellar gas and dust is almost transparent to near infrared, such a signal would be visible from a far greater distance and sending a signal using infrared light would require less energy than sending the same amount using visible light, she added. As Discovery News explained on Wednesday, the search for intelligent life forms is a highly speculative affair, as astronomers and researchers hunting for evidence of otherworldly creatures aren't even sure exactly what they're supposed to be looking for. Neurosetti provides a compl complement to radio antenna and other technologies currently being used in the hunt. Over the years, SETI has advanced from exclusively seeking out radio transmissions to probing optical wavelengths for signs of otherworldly intelligence, but attempting to detect artificial pulses of infrared radiation has only recently become possible. The website said, in fact, Wright said that they had to wait eight years for the technology to catch up with the concept. Three years ago, while at the Dunlap Institute, she purchased newly released detectors and ran a series of tests to ensure that they worked well enough to equip onto a telescope. Once they passed the test, development of Nero City kicked into high gear. It's been installed at the University of California's Lick Observatory near San Jose and saw first lights on March 15th. The Nero City team with their new infrared detector inside the dome at Lick Observatory is pictured here. Okay, according to UCSD, the instrument will gather more information than previous optical detectors by recording light levels over an extended period of time so that researchers can analyze them in search of patterns that could sign, be signs of other civilizations. Okay, so, very interesting. Again, to the people of this new array near SETI, I just want to throw out my two cents. The people of SETI have been searching for a while, and they're searching way, way out there. Oh, there were just a bunch of news reports about UFO sightings here in our local system where we could see them. People have taken pictures of them, videos. So I would suggest that rather than looking way far out there for intelligent life, why don't you maybe try looking a little bit closer. Look into where these sightings are and aim your uh, equipment that way maybe you might have an opportunity to catch something. I know you think I'm just being a smart ass, but I'm not. I'm just wondering why, when there are so many sightings so close, why we don't just point that way and, you know, try to decipher. It's almost as if we're intentionally looking where we know that they aren't or where we're not seeing them. I don't know. Anyway, just my two cents. Back to the reports. Here we have a object supersized and it says it's an object seen around the world and so this video itself is quite uh, interesting
Have you seen this object? Well, it seems that lots of folks have. Okay. So I'm going to leave this link available to you so you can check it out and see what you think. Okay. All right. And let me leave that link and let's move on to the last one here. This is a story of Michael Sell, a PhD. Whistleblower reveals multiple secret space programs concerned about new alien visitors. This is a review of sorts and kind of an evaluation of a good ETXSG and the data he's been releasing by Michael Sala, who happens to live here in Big Island. I've met Michael many times and respect and appreciate his input on various things, ET, UFO disclosure, etc., etc., I found this to be very helpful and all the information about good ETXSG and his data in one place kind of an article. Here's a couple of highlights about what he's get regarding good ETXSG. Using an online pseudonym, good ETXSG, the whistleblower who announced yesterday that his first name is Corey that he will soon end his anonymity as described in interview and post in two major online forums his former covert background with a number of secret space programs run by various military, corporate, and earlier human civilizations. A significant point concerning security in good ETXSG's posting is that concerning the threat posed by artificial intelligence. According to Good ETXSG, artificial intelligence, AI, has been developed by multiple extraterrestrial civilizations that have created synthetic AI humanoids, only to have them turn against their creators. As a last resort, individuals trained at institu intuitive empaths were employed to identify AI influence as well as any other forms of deception. This is the main job that Good ETXSG says he performed during his 20-year tour of duty. How credible is Good ETXSG? According to Wilcock, Good ETXSG's testimony is consistent with multiple other insider sources discussing secret space program and extraterrestrial life. In my own database of whistleblowers, contactees, leaked documents, and breaking news on the secret space program, I have found nothing awry in Good ETXSG's claims. His claim of separate space programs is consistent with Randy Kramer's claims that he served with the Earth's Defense Force for 17 years on Mars to defend the five civilian bases belonging to the Mars Colony Corporation. In his alleged 17 years on Mars, Kramer claims he never once ventured into Mars Colony Corporation facilities, even for R&R. That appeared strange to me when I first heard of it. That degree of formal separation between military and corporate bases on Mars, however, supports Goody T. XSG's claims of separate space programs. Goody T. X discusses 22 ET races that have genetically intervened with the human genome. They comprise a UN-type federation of off-world beings interested in humanity. This is consistent with the testimony of contactee Alex Collier. Good ETXG's Corey may very well be one of the most significant whistleblowers ever to come forward with his claims of 20 years of service with multiple secret space programs, if confirmation can be found. His current revelations about the Alien Space Alliance may be even more significant if events transpire as he suggests. At the moment, it's important to keep an open mind while remaining cautious and examining the full extent of his claims concerning multiple secret space programs and the reactions to a powerful new group of visiting extraterrestrials supportive of full disclosures. Okay, and there's a lot more to this article, so I'm going to leave that to you. So you can check it out, see what he has to say, and that kind of gives you an idea, though. So there you go. That is our UFO news. I'll be back in just a few moments. Stay tuned. Come into our circle, great spirit. Fill our souls with peace. Send down your love, send down your love.
continue on. So today I thought uh, I would just bring up some random thoughts, ideas, articles, just kind of catch up on some of the news that's out there. There's a lot of stuff that goes on in the world each and every day. Some of the things, you know, it's important that we pay attention to. Some of the things we hear is just the same old repeat nonsense that's going on. The war on terror, for example. The war on terror, for those who are paying attention, have been paying attention, is a war against the American people. You don't have a face on terror, which is why there's always these new boogeymen that jump up. So, you know, we can get caught up in it. We've come to find out that the mainstream media, which includes Fox, even though they try to pretend that they're not, MSNBC, CNN, CBS, they all misinform the public. There are still are individuals out there that will turn on any one of these channels on any given day sit there believing they are actually getting real news despite the fact that information is out that lets people know that none of these networks are really providing you with anything except their own agenda people still fall into it hook line and sinker I mean what do you do when you have a society of folks and people that really aren't listening and continuing to be uninformed you know the other day I was watching uh, Passion of the Christ and one of the things that just struck me was in watching the movie and just watching the background people and their reactions and how they behaved and the blood thirstiness of the, the Roman soldiers that were beating Christ and, you know, the anger that was there. And it just made me think of this world and it's like, how much have we really changed? We really haven't. We're still the same bloodthirsty group now that we were then. We're still the same people that are running around afraid to stand up to authority we're still the same cowards and the same you know chickens without their heads running around yet we have all of the potential to not be that way you know a couple weeks ago I gave a talk that we're our own worst enemy and I believe that's true you know we have opportunities to fix ourselves and move forward but we don't seem to do that one issue that is a very touchy issue is racism and I hesitate sometimes to want to talk about it simply because when somebody brings up the idea of racism instantly there are those who are going to want to jump out and call you racist for bringing up this subject yet it's the subject that we hear we need to talk about a lot of people say we need to address these issues we need to talk about it well if we do then don't we need to be able to have an open mind to discuss it and instantly giving the label of somebody as being racist when they bring up the subject isn't that defeating the purpose you see if we are going to address the subject of racism we have to get a couple of things correct first of all we all have eyes that are able to see and we use our powers of observation and look around in the world you know what we see when we look at other people we see people of different colors so because we are observant enough to notice people of different colors and then we voice into the world that we see people that are black and brown and red and yellow and what have you we shouldn't be labeled as being racist because we're observing what we see with our eyes it's just an observation okay so we have all of these different colors and if we think back to grade school days we've learned to classify things according to colors so it's no surprise that we look at our races and we think of them as white black brown red yellow in future days we'll also be adding green to that and grays and blues we already know about blues from the past when we read things like the Krishna and the stories in the Bhagavad Gita the blue people flying around so here we have different colors on this planet and we're having trouble getting along and every time we bring this up we seem to fight with each other the way I see it is this if we're going to discuss the issues of racism we have to come to the table completely open-minded and unbiased we can't be biased about our own particular race and that seems to be where we have our problems you see we have no problem talking about the battling and the fighting that goes on between members of one race and another race we have no problem saying that these problems exist and they do and it's true but where we fail is we fail to discuss the problems that go on with the fights 
within each race, with the white on right, white crime, with the black on black crime, or the Hispanic on Hispanic, or the Asian on Asian. So we ignore this, and yet it seems that if we take a good look through history, the biggest problems we have is not fighting between the different races, but fighting within the races. So for a long time, we talk about slavery. Well, whites have enslaved whites for a long time. This is where, when we look through, what is the history we see? We see whites enslaving whites. Okay, we also have the history of blacks enslaving blacks. Yet, we go through society and we want to turn a blind eye when we say we need to talk about black on black crime. We've had issues with Hispanics on Hispanics and Asians on Asians. And we turn a blind eye to all the fighting that's going on within the races. Yet, if we were to stop these things, what would happen? If when we had white on white crime taking place with members of one of the white race enslaving others, if we stopped that, imagine where we'd be today. If we didn't turn a blind eye to the black on black crime going on, where would we be? Maybe we might fix the problem or the Asian on Asian or the, the Mexican on Mexican, All, whatever it is. We need to be open-minded because we are our own worst enemies. Okay? I mean, how many folks, just as an example, how many of you realize that, that in America, there is a, the, the very first legal slave in America, first legal slave was a black man owning another black man. How many realize that? Many think Whitey was to blame for it. That's not the case. Anthony Johnson, look up the story of Anthony Johnson, a black man who was brought to America. He was an indentured servant, worked off his time, was released and freed, had his land at his house. He had a woman that served along with him. They lived together. They took on slaves. They had a slave named John Castor. John Castor worked off his time, was to be freed, but his master didn't want to let him be free. He reluctantly let him go, and he went off and he began to work, not in slavery, but work for a white man named Robert Parker. But Anthony Johnson wasn't happy about this, so he sued Mr. Parker and won the lawsuit and therefore got John Castor to be his permanent slave, not indentured servant, slave. So on the records, the first official legal slave is a black man owned by another black man. That's black on black crime. We shouldn't turn a blind eye to that. Look how long ago that happened. Had we not dealt with it then, had the courts done the right thing and said no human should ever own another human, where would we be? If we stopped the fighting amongst what's happening within the races, and what I said was just an example. There's plenty with white on white and the Asians and the you know, Hispanics, all the races. We've all done it. We're all guilty. So we need to stop and we need to say let's fix the problems in our own backyards. Let's look at what's going on within our races, because that's where the biggest problems are, not outside, but within. And when we each fix the problems within, we'll be much better. Because the best people that are going to teach the other people in their races are the people in their races. So white people are going to teach the whites the best about things, and the blacks are going to teach the blacks, and the browns the browns, and the yellows the yellows. Instead, we're trying to mix things up in other ways, and that's not working. Because as society goes, the younger generations aren't listening to people outside of their own race. And we've gotten so screwed up in the world. There are times in the world where we have fought against segregation in so many different ways, and yet as the world continues to move forward, we seem to be moving to the very things that we fought it to end. And none of that makes sense. So... I think we really need to take a good look at ourselves, my friends. And if somebody wants to call me racist out there for bringing this up, well, nothing I can do about that. But it's a subject we need to talk about. And when we talk about it and look at the statistics and are willing to deal with it unbiased, we might actually find a solution to the problem rather than running around you know, for another couple thousand years or more dealing with the same issue. We're smarter than that. We need to do better than that. So let's do that. Let's do better and realize our true potential of what we're about. Now, part of the problem that goes on is 
there's a divide and conquer mentality out there in the world. It's one challenge that we have individually to try to fix ourselves, but we're trying to do this within a system that's broken while at the same time having this war of terror on the people. And the war of terror continues to go on and people are off balance. And people are pitted against each other in this race war that is being promoted by our governments, by our media. So there's a lot of challenges in the world we have to overcome. We go inside ourselves, we can fix the problem. We can't expect somebody outside of ourselves. Now, there's some drills coming up. I want to bring your attention to this drill because this goes right into what I was saying um, of those trying to oppress. This here is called Jade Helm. I just want to give you the link so you can read it. You can see there's a lengthy article here all about Jade Helm, what it is. Basically, and I'm just going to link, leave this to you, but basically this, from what I'm understanding, it's supposed to be a drill that is taking place across six states. And these six states, um, it may even expand from there, but during this drill, there are those who are concerned that this is actually martial law that's going to be put in place because there are members from all different agencies that are going to be involved mixing in with people for a period of six to eight weeks during this drill. Let me, let me give you a little highlights here. It says the uh, news of Jade Helm has caught the internet on fire. Now coming out of the woodwork are many naysayers, propagandists, and straight out liars. Yes, I'm calling them out for what they are. Political correctness stops here. The truth may hurt, but the truth, if you don't like that, then either go to a different site or change your behavior. There have been individuals from trolls to others that claim that they are special operations command, starting that this is not a real drill or that the documents have been modified. These statements are not true and only being used in another psyop upon the American people. I will prove to you beyond a shadow of a doubt that this operation is in fact true and that these people are out people and call these people out for what they are liars anyone who tells you this is not a planned drill is lying to you either blatantly or by complete e ignorance it says jade helm 15 is a soc special operations command realistic military training drill planned for the southwestern united states covering seven states which broke in alternative media almost a week ago freedom outpost joe Ma mccaster covered this in his report okay anyway there's a lot of links here. I want you to check this out. See what you think. I'm not going to get more into it because I don't know all that much other than what I've read and shared with you. So check that out. Let's compare notes and see what's going on and uh, see if we can figure out what's up with that. All right. Uh, here is... <laughs> this was pretty interesting. If there's any reality to this, this is truly a game changer. This is... Uh, allegedly pictures of Stonehenge being constructed. You say, what? Pictures of Stonehenge being constructed? How could that be? Because according to this article, Stonehenge was created in 1954. These pictures allegedly capture the process of building of Stonehenge. As the author of the article, photos were taken in 1954. Let's try to understand what is embodied in this photo. Okay, Stonehenge filming 54 to 58. At all times, all governments, and especially outside circles, were engaged in the fraud. The first reaction of some readers who continue to say something about the Notch restoration substitute ancient megaliths, sure, that no explanation is still not enough. In the early photos stating from the first, which is higher than you see, the white circles indicating the location for future megaliths. This is the scope of the work for builders, layout from the customer made of lime in the wells of the blue pristine lawn. Megalith is not pulled out of carrots, leaving without the slightest trace of the procedure. Next, consider if the pictures closely, you will find both military and barbed wire around the area and other details saying that at certain points in the future, Cyclopean structure of the ancient Druid Antle Ashura Sinuryanta Aryans were protected sensitive sites. Anyway, I just want you to see some of these pictures here. I'm going to move on. But if this is real, then uh, this really is quite uh, quite a game changer on 
what we know is real. Because what else might not be quite as uh, truthful? All right. Very fascinating indeed. I don't have the answer for this. I'm just showing you the article. And you can see there's lots of pictures. Very fascinating. Okay. Interesting indeed. So check that out. Um, here is an article about this Blood Moon Tetrad coming up. Or the third one in there. Blood moon is sometimes used to describe a total lunar eclipse. When the Earth casts its shadow on a full moon and eclipses it, the moon may get a red glow. Total lunar eclipses are rare. Only about one in three are total. About four to five total eclipses can be seen in any place on Earth in a decade. Lunar eclipses usually do not occur in any specific order. However, every once in a while, four total lunar eclipses happen in a row. This is called a lunar tetrad. The total lunar eclipses happen six months apart. They are at least six full moons between two lunar eclipses in a tetrad. Okay, so coming up, we have April 4th, and then we have the 28th. Last year, April 15th was the first one. The second was on October 8th. What's interesting about this is that they fall on holy days on the biblical calendar. Okay, so what is the biblical calendar? The biblical calendar is the Jewish calendar because it's, you know, matches the timeline in the Bible. So when one looks at the Jewish calendar, that's why when you look at the years different, the years 5775, five, they have a different way of accounting of time. And so if we look at that calendar and we see these particular eclipses, they line up. Saturday is Passover. Saturday is the day when we have this blood moon eclipse. Okay. It happened last year the same way, and the next one, September 24th, is also going to be on a holy day. What's the significance of these blood moons? Well, it seems to be that each time that one of these have occurred, something significant has happened with Israel, whether they regained their freedom, whether they regained part of the city, whatever the case may be, something significant happened with Israel. Israel and as we know what goes on with Israel affects the whole world so the whole world is affected by whatever takes place it certainly seems that during these times there's been a lot of intensity around these blood moons the last couple ones we've had the two of them leading into this one seems that uh, things may be ramping up because when we look at the blood moons that have occurred and we look at the prophecy of what would be occurring during those times we seem to be right on course with all of the violence and the ramp-ups to wars and the rumors of the wars and all this other stuff. So we'll see where it goes. But this blood moon is coming up this weekend. Remember, this weekend we've got a lot of intense energy and a lot of uh, religious and spiritual activities. This is the Holy Week. Friday is, is uh, Good Friday. Saturday is Passover. Sunday is Easter. Usually Passover and Easter aren't at the same time. They're maybe a week or so apart. Here everything's together. We got the full moon as well. We got the blood moon eclipse. Let's just see what's going on with it. Just know that we're in some really cool, unique times. Unique times indeed. All right, here's an article by uh, Dr. Leonard Caldwell, and it's about cancer. And it's about how to cure cancer. It says all cancer can be cured in less than 12 weeks. From Greg Prescott. It says, please note any information presented in the articles for educational research only. It says, in a recent interview, Dr. Leonard Caldwell claimed that all cancer, along with all other kinds of immune diseases, are based on emotional and mental stress and can be cured in less than 12 weeks through holistic cancer remedies. In addition, Dr. Caldwell named several cancer-curing treatments that are being suppressed by the medical and pharmaceutical industry, including sodium bicarbonate, apricot kernels, rife machines, and colloidal silver. Why is there no official cure for cancer? Well, if you were wondering why there's no official cure, then try tracing the revenue cancer takes in each year. 
Cancer is a $60 billion a year industry, while cancer protection and the early intervention of cancer brings only an additional $162 billion each year. When you investigate the roots for the medical and pharmaceutical industries, you will find the name John D. Rockefeller. Dr. Coldwell states that the medical curriculum was created by John D. Rockefeller over 100 years ago when he produced chemicals and didn't know how to sell those chemicals. He produced salespeople and called them MDs. He produced the entire curriculum for the education of medical doctors. Rockefeller made sure that the medical doctors never learned how to cure. A medical doctor has about one hour of education in diet and nutritional health and no knowledge on healing. They study pathology, which is the study of decay and death. They study the chemical intervention with symptoms, but they don't study healing, curing, or looking at the root cause of disease. The only cause for any kind of disease is the lack of energy, and that's mainly caused by physical or emotional stress. Dr. Caldwell added that the medical industry owns the media and part partially owns the health insurance industry as they both work together hand in hand. In the early 1900s, Nobel Award winner Otto Warburg and Max Planck proved that cancer can only exist in oxygen-lacking acidic environment. Typically, a normal pH value for is 7 for most people. If your pH is lower than 7, it means that there are too many toxins in your body, which does not allow your body to be in optimal alkaline state. When you are in an acidic state, your body is lacking oxygen. Dr. Caldwell stated a case where an on oncological physician in Italy, Dr. Tullio Simonici, has cured all types of cancer with pharmaceutical grade sodium bicarbonate, baking soda. Dr. Simonocci is the author of Cancer is a Fungus, and his research concluded that abnormal cells are held together by a fungus, and the fungus can exist in an alkaline environment. Through his sodium bicarbonate treatment, the fungi is attacked, and cancer is eliminated. His research concluded that the medical profession has only 2% cancer cure rate. Dr. Caldwell believes that the radiation and chemotherapy cause cancer, while surgery spreads the cancer like an explosion to the entire body. Dr. Caldwell added, cancer is your friend, cancer is there to save your life. Okay, so we have a lot more to the article on how one can cure it and so on. And it says, uh, well, I'm going to leave this for you, but we've talked about this before. You're familiar with this. I mean, we don't have to rely on the old archaic methods. Again, we're using systems that we don't know how they work, using these things like chemicals and chemotherapy, then you hear people dying from that. How many people die? I think more people die from chemotherapy than are actually healed. Well, what good is that system? Because you have people out there saying that they have a cure for cancer that they're doing through natural means. And how, how unfortunate is it that baking soda something that everybody has probably on their shelf in their refrigerator or up in their shelves how unfortunate it is that so many people have died when this very simple product could possibly have been a cure for them yet we're not informed by our medical profession because there's no money in the cure there's only money in the treatment the continued treatment and that's why we don't see any diseases cured when's the last time that we've heard of a disease that we've really cured. It's been a while, hasn't it? It's been a long while because there's no money in the cure. And so we may have all the races and all this and that trying to find the solutions. Again, people have to take matters into their own hands because when we wait for our governments to do things, they don't do them. So we, the people of the world, we need to step up and we need to do the things that we need to heal ourselves to feed ourselves properly, to take care of ourselves mentally, spiritually, physically. Because if we rely on the governments, they seem to only care about themselves and the money. And no one's going to get cured because if someone's more interested in providing you a treatment so they can get money rather than giving you the cure, they're not going to want to do that if we live in a society that's greedy. Things aren't going to get better that way, my friends. All right, here's a message today comes to us from Hilarion. Here we go. Hilarion.
Hilarion. March 29 to April 5, 2015, by Marlene Swetlashoff. Beloved ones, the winds of change blow ever more frequently. All about you there are increasing signs of the renewal of your lands, your peoples, and your souls. As each person aligns to their own divine essence and daily invokes its presence within them, there is an acceleration of changes that take place within their physical body. These changes occur in cycles and you will know when you are in a cycle of assimilation of the cosmic energies flowing in through your crown chakra, as this is the time of the taking in of new information and you are much energized, invigorated, and uplifted. Then comes another cycle of the assimilation of these energies in which you, in your physical body, find the need to rest, to sleep, to nurture self and to contemplate and ground them into your physical body in order to anchor them upon and within the earth. Gone are the days when this process occurred in terms of decades, now it takes place in a much accelerated pace. Such are the times in which you are living. Rising before you is the evidence of all that was once held secret and which now can no longer be contained by those who strive to withhold. The dawn of the new day rises each morning both literally and figuratively. You who are well versed in your daily disciplines feel these from within. Your higher connection always steers you into the correct assumption of the doings of those upon your planet. You have been seeing the effects of changes that are being wrought by the gathering together of many people to endorse an intention to create a correction, to movements that occur that would take you and your planet off course. We from higher perspective increasingly overlight your souls that you might be collectively inspired to avert that which is not for the highest good of your people and your planet. Those who have such intentions will not succeed in their endeavors to regain their control. The world is changing because you are changing. As you continue your inner work by pondering on the more hidden aspects of yourselves that are coming into your awareness, you are serving the greater good of all, for as such work is done, it is your personal efforts which expand the consciousness potential for all others within your sphere of influence. Consciously or not, you are creating a world where truth, honesty, and transparency are the norm and not the exception. This is a trying time for those who are in denial of the transformation that is occurring within the psyche of humanity for they do not see the writing on the wall. It behooves those such as you to hold all people in their diversity of opinion in the highest of light, kindness, and compassion. The highest qualities of each soul are beginning to rise to the surface of their consciousness and you will see these blossoming with ever greater joy and recognition within your inner being. As you each maintain and uphold your spiritual integrity and stay true to self, much will begin to fall into place in your personal lives. Those who can help you to achieve your part in the divine plan will come into your sphere of influence and it will be a time of quiet joy and inner knowing. Plans will be set and goals will be accomplished with a sense of confidence and ease. Events will transpire in a magical way to open up amazing possibilities and opportunities that you never even dreamed could happen. The sense of peace and harmony even now pervades your outer world and it is a time of the gathering of the tribes, so to speak. Soul connections between people take place in greater numbers in a rapid movement of convergence that will leave some of you speechless. Be open to all potential within self most of all. You it is who create the higher vision and you it is who will see it in fruition. All of heaven joyfully conspires to make it so. Until next week. I am Hyla Ryan. Alright, good message from Hyla Ryan as always. So that brings us to today's passage for the Warrior of the Light. We're on page 53. The Warrior of the Light knows the importance of intuition. In the midst of the battle, he does not have time to think about the enemy's blows, and so he uses his instinct and obeys his angel. In times of peace, he deciphers the signs that God sends him. People say he's mad, or he lives in a fantasy world, or even how can he possibly believe in all such illogical things? But the warrior knows that the intuition is God's alphabet, and he continues listening to the wind and talking to the stars. So go ahead and close your eyes, take a deep breath, and exhale. Take another deep breath, exhale again. Another deep breath, and exhale. Now I want you just to imagine that you are seated.
along the beach and you're watching the waves as they come in and out back and forth and as they do you get in sync with the rhythm that moves back and forth and you very easily understand and feel that this rhythm is the same rhythm that moves back and forth within you so you feel the connection and as you continue to move through the world you feel the energies of life moving back and forth like the ocean and you feel the connection and no matter where you go and what you do you feel the energies moving back and forth to and fro and you realize that all of life is like the tides of the ocean the energy moves in and it moves out it moves back and it moves forth and as we get in synchronicity with this energy we feel ourselves moving smoothly through life and we realize that being aware of how things are moving is a big part of our solution so as we go through the world today we just go through feeling the energy being aware of what the energy is around us what it feels like what it looks like what results come from this energy and the more we get used to feeling the more we are able to move through life more efficiently because we understand much more about the energy that we are dealing with so let the subconscious mind continue on the journey of feeling the energy around us observing the world and the energy that we live in and let's bring the conscious mind back to the present moment on the count of three three coming back to the present moment filled with confidence two coming back to the present moment filled with faith and one coming back to the present moment happy healthy and whole happy healthy and whole take another deep breath exhale and open your eyes and that is it my friends that is our show for today thank you so much for being here have a good week read the articles check out the stories that are there we've got a lot going on this week the blood moons and we'll see where it all takes us but life is going to continue to evolve we can't help but not move along with it unless of course we don't do anything but even then I still think we're evolving so you have an awesome day today just Feel what's going on around you. Be aware of the energy. And uh, that's enough. I'll be back tomorrow. Till then, I love you. Keep loving each other. And I'll talk to you soon. Peace. I'm out of here.